Hello, hello, hello and welcome. Thank you so, so much for joining me. Uh, as always, um, we are live on Facebook, on YouTube, on LinkedIn and uh, through Microsoft Teams. So if you've got any of those platforms, dive on. This is the final one. This is the final session in uh, six of six. Uh, but it's actually 12 of 12 if you take into series one. This was the second series. So if you haven't seen series one, go back and take a look at it. Uh, we, we talk about more theories and how you implement them and how you apply them. So let's get the boring intro part out of the way while people start to join us. Like I said, this is the second series in explaining theories and strategic elements of marketing. Models and theories that will help make you a better all round marketer, but with a proviso of you applying them and molding them to whatever your current activities are and utilizing them to help you get the best out of them. And that's what we'll do today. We'll look at the final model, which will help you analyze what you're doing, but also help you create objectives that aren't just specific for marketing. More on that later. First of all, intro to Professional Academy. So they're a strategic partner of the CIM and a globally recognized partner of marketing training, qualifications and apprenticeships. I'm proud to say that I'm a tutor uh, for, those, for, for them and I have been for many, many years. So on that point, let me introduce myself. My name is Peter Sumpton. I'm the Lego Master of Marketing. Hello. Uh, the reason I'm the Lego Master of Marketing is because I'm a marketing consultant that goes into businesses helps them understand all the different components that go into marketing, combine these together to create a, a cohesive, strategic, fun, understandable and unique plan that gets them moving, that gets them focused on becoming a marketing orientated company. Been tutoring for about 10 years now and I currently assist Professional Academy with CIM qualifications and apprenticeships of which I'm proud to do so really great company to work for. Check them out if you haven't already. So a little introduction to this series. What we've done within this series is we've looked at, um, we've gone straight from analysis and auditing and we're going right through to controls and measurements, which we'll cover today. The idea is we get you thinking from being a bad marketer to a good marketer. If you've got any questions or comments, I'll answer them at the end of this session because I want to get through this session methodically so you can understand how you apply the theory. What theory are we talking about today? We are talking about the balance scorecard, what it is and why it's important. So first and foremost, what is the balance scorecard? And we'll see a visual in a moment. But the balance scorecard was produced by Kaplan and Norton in 1992 and it helps organizations measure business performance using financial and non-financial measures. The aim they say and I'm reading this is to align business activities to the vision and strategy of the business, improve internal and external communications and monitor business performance against strategic goals. Whew, bit of a mouthful I know but we can break that down what does it help us to achieve? It helps us to communicate end goals through smaller achievements, align all the day-to-day -day work that we all have within a business, prioritize pro projects and measure and monitor these activities. When we view this in the first instance, it can look really, really complex. But what we'll do, we'll have a look at it in its entirety. We'll break it down into the individual sections and then we'll go back and show how you would implement it, break it down even further. One thing to note here is that my interpretation of this balance scorecard might be different to somebody else's. What I intend to do today is talk you through it to make sure that you know and understand how it can be useful and of some value. Like I've said throughout this whole series, as long as we're utilizing these models and theories to the best of our advantage and we're getting some value out of them, me personally, I don't really care how we utilize them as long as it's adding value. Yes, there's some structure, there's some format that we need to follow, but as long as the end point gets results and adds value to whatever you're doing, I don't see there's a problem. 
That said, let's take a look at the balance scorecard and what it actually looks like. First of all, we'll see a simplistic um, view, a simplistic diagram of what that looks like, and that's what it looks like here. It's made up of five interactive components. At the heart of it is the vision and the strategy. Now, I'm not going to be discussing discussing any type of vision or any type of strategy today. We covered that on the last the last session with Ansos Matrix, so go back and take a look at that. But what you should have, you should have an overall vision, an overall strategic direction of which the balance scorecard feeds into or helps you achieve it. Everything the balance scorecard does should help you achieve the strategic direction and vision that you are focused on. The four other elements consist of financial capabilities, customer, internal processes and internal learning and growth. Broken down, what that means is that from a financial perspective, what financial aspects will help us achieve our strategic direction, our goal? From a customer perspective, how can we become more customer focused? Internal processes help us understand what processes we need to implement to improve. And internal learning and growth, how can we facilitate and develop skills within the business that we will need in the future? And that's a really, really simplistic way of looking at it and viewing the balance scorecard. But how do all these components work together? How do they help us achieve one main aim? Well, what we need to do is look at each element specifically, break these four categories down into four additional components. So this might start to get confusing, but when you see it, it makes sense. So we break it down into objectives. Now it's important to note these objectives for me personally don't have to be smart because we add other elements into this mix which make them smart. So we've got an objective. We need measures. So how are we going to actually measure we've achieved this objective? And then we've got a target, a specific target. And within these objectives, measures and targets, it might feel like you're duplicating or repeating yourself. And that for some instances, like financial, like we'll see, is the case. But in some, it can be quite drastically different. And, and we'll show you an example of that. And the final thing to note is the initiatives. And what we mean by that is what initiatives do we need to take to achieve our target and our overall objective, which in line helps us achieve or go towards our strategic direction. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to break each one down into their individual components so you can see exactly what each one means and how you do it. So the first one we're going to look at is finance. So the balance scorecard and the financial area. So we're looking at monetary elements here. So what would be a good financial objective? Well, we could say that increasing profit margin by 5% uh, within next year is a good objective. But how would we measure that? Well, we can measure the margin based on the sales of a certain product. So we could get detailed there in how we measure it. It could be a, sp a specific department, division, product, service that we look at. What's our target? Well, we know our target, it's a 5% margin. What does that look like in monetary terms? 1.1 million. We know that and that's our target. Profit margin of 1.1 million. Now the initiatives, how are we going to achieve that 1.1 million? Well, for this organization, this hypothetical organization, we're going to focus on new product development and also the cross sell of current products that we have on the marketplace. An easy way to increase and improve margin cross selling because we're not actually changing any of the products that much, if at all. So what's the next area we're going to look at? So the next area we'll look at, which is on screen now, is customer. So what do we mean by this? OK, so we want to introduce customers here. So there's a customer element, an external element viewpoint that we need to look at. And what we're trying to do is get our customers to purchase more. So we want to increase product purchase, the frequency per week. That is our main objective here. How are we going to measure that? So we'll measure the number of people purchasing more than two products a week. That is going to be our measure. 
Look at how many people. What's our target? Three purchases per week. So each person is going to purchase more than three element uh, things, three products, three services per week. And that's our target. That is our target. But how are we going to achieve this? What initiatives have we got? Well, what we're going to do, similarly to the financial one, we're going to bundle products as well as cross sell them. So again, we're not really doing anything new. We're not product development in this stage. We're just bundling products together. So it's easier to achieve our objective and our target if we're bundling them together, maybe in threes, fours and fives, that should help us achieve our objective. Fantastic, whizzing through these, brilliant. On to the next one, the next point. Now these final two elements, they're internal. So we need to look internally. In a way, it's looking internally to help external, but everything is kind of that anyway. What do we mean by this? So an internal business process. So what we're going to do hypothetically within this product bundle, improving how many we, we sell, we're going to introduce a loyalty scheme for all customers before March 21st. Not long to do that, I know. How are we going to measure the success of this? How are we going to measure the success of this objective Remember, it's not the success necessarily of the loyalty scheme itself. It's about the introduction of the loyalty scheme. So what we're going to say is that we have the functionality online of a loyalty scheme. It makes sense, but we need to know that, that, that this loyalty scheme is live and up and running. And what another measure we'll have there is the number of signups. Remember, this is the introduction of the loyalty scheme. So what targets might we attribute to the introduction of a loyalty scheme? Well, it could be that it's the development of the loyalty platform because that's a great objective because if it never comes to fruition, we haven't developed anything. So we need to develop it really. So that is a great target to have developed the actual scheme. Another target could be 20,000 members sign up for the loyalty scheme. And this is the introduction of it. So moving on to initiatives, and this is where it all links together, moving on to initiatives. One, we develop the back end of the website because we need somewhere for the loyalty scheme to sit. So that is a fundamental initiative we need to take, but also pre-promotion. Pre-promotion before the loyalty scheme goes live to try and get those 20,000 members to sign up. If we can get them all pre, and then when it's live, they're already signed up, fantastic. But let's give, us, give ourselves a little leeway. So we know and understand that there'll be a bit of a lag on these signups. But again, that links back to the objectives and making sure you know and understand what you're trying to achieve in the first instance. So the final element of the balance scorecard, this final element that we'll look at is again internal. And this is looking at your staff. This is looking at learning and growth of your staff improving skills, improving their ability, but also to reach a certain objective, also to reach that strategic direction, that vision. And what we've seen so far, that vision and strategy is to do with new product development, increasing product sales through bundles and cross sells and frequency, but also loyalty. So what are we doing here on learning and growth? Well, an objective there could be community management training for all members of staff, why? Because if we're introducing a loyalty scheme, there'll be questions that need answered and you'll be building the, your own community within that loyalty scheme. So what's a good measure of this community management and the training that goes into it? Well, we could say that all members of staff have to achieve a particular community management award certification, if you like. Our target then becomes all members of staff that take that, that um, certification that award achieving a merit or above and that's great a fantastic target to have but what initiatives can we introduce that make sure we hit that target well first of all we need to enroll everybody on that community management training and secondly we could implement our own internal training along with that certification and the training that comes with that we're doubling up we're making sure that everybody does achieve a merit or above like I said, this isn't just for marketing to do. This is 
and holistic view. This is for the whole organization to, to be part of this balanced scorecard, to have their own objectives. For example, finance, they would be in charge of that objective. Would they be in charge of completing it and achieving it? Yes and no, they'd certainly measure it, but they would have to rely on marketing and sales and customer service to help them achieve it. So they can't achieve that goal without the rest of the business. And that's why the balanced scorecard is so integral and important. So what I did say before we went through each area is that looking at it like this, it can seem very, very daunting. It can seem a little bit almost impossible to get that. And yes, the balanced scorecard is really, really tricky to implement because you need that whole company buy-in. If one area breaks down, then you won't achieve that overall vision or strategic direction, which is integral to the whole balanced scorecard. One thing we can do is go back through one of those elements of the balanced scorecard to show you how you can break down every single individual component and how you can do it step by step for each element. So if you look at the screen right now, what we have is the balance scorecard completed in its entirety. That looks really messy. If I said this is our, our aim, plus we've got a vision and strategy in the middle of it, then that gets a bit, whoa, can we achieve this? There's a lot to do here. How do we implement it? Where are we going with this? To get to this stage, we can take a step-by-step -step approach. And that's what I kind of want to show you right now. So let's go back to the learning and growth element and look at how I would implement it, how I would develop this. So we've got a blank internal learning, learning and growth element of the balance scorecard. So if we do this step-by-step, piece-by-piece, we can see how simple it is to build on every single part. And I'm just reiterating here what I did, but if we don't see it all on screen, it can highlight how simple we can make this. So let's go through it. Okay, let's take the objective. So what was that objective that we were looking to achieve? So what we wanted to do was, because remember this is internal learning and growth, we wanted internal um, training in community management. That was our objective. So to develop some training and we might go external for that training, but internally we want to develop our staff's community management skills. Right, great. We've got an objective. It's not really smart. Um, we can get training, probably phone up tomorrow and get some training sorted, but that doesn't really move anything or give us that focus. We need to be more specific. So let's put a measure towards that objective. How are we going to measure it? How do we know we're doing things correctly? So what we do, we know we've got community management training and our measure is going to be all staff to achieve this communi community management training and have an award at the end because of it, a certification because of it. And that's how we're going to measure it. We're going to measure it on everybody achieving this award through their training. Fantastic, right? We've got a measure. Everybody could get that award, but how do we know or what is our target to make sure that that award and those people have got the best out of this training. We need a really specific target that everyone can focus in on and whoever is in charge of that training has the focus on achieving it. And what we can say here is that all members of staff are to achieve a merit or above. Now we could be even more detailed there in our objective or our target by saying that all members of staff achieve a merit or above before a particular date, say, September 2021, for example. Now that makes it even more specific. Now the final step, we know what we want to achieve. We know the details behind what we want to achieve. The final step is the initiative stage. How are we going to achieve this? What initiatives do we need to put in place to achieve our objectives and our target? In this instance, number one, we enroll them all onto a course in the first place. It takes that pressure off our employees to do that off their own back. And number two, we develop our own internal training on our systems, on our software, on our community management areas of the business to help them 
with their external training in community management. And in doing that, we will facilitate and we will help people get to a, a merit or above. And we've, we've achieved that objective on the balance scorecard. Now, the one thing to note here is that you don't have to, what, what I've done there is I've shown you one objective for each area. Now, you don't have to do that for every single area. You can have two, three, four, five, because again, marketing isn't in charge of the balance scorecard, the company is. So these learning and, and growth objectives or objective, as you can see on the screen, could be to do with HR and HR grab those objectives and they run with them. So this is again why it's company wide. But if we take this step by step approach to building up each objective and having initiatives at the end of it, getting everyone on board, then we can really, really get the business 100% focused on achieving a specific vision through a specific strategy with these objectives in tow. So I think that kind of highlights it, its importance, but let's, let's just look at that in a little bit more detail, shall we? The balance scorecard in itself is hugely important because instead of viewing success just from financial perspective, we get to do it through the effect that every other element has aimed on a specific business outcome or business strategy. And this allows the business to measure and monitor each area of the business to see where fixes might need to be achieved. Roadblocks might be, we're getting that friction. And this is combined with specific goals. So again, you give that business the focus. We've got financial performance. We've got customer or stakeholder satisfaction. We've got internal processes which will achieve efficiency and we've got learning and growth which hopefully will promote innovative ideas and innovative ways of working within the business. Not only that, holistically the balance scorecard focuses on what has to be done to improve the performance of the business. It provides integration across departments and helps departments work together to achieve specific goals. It can also help you translate your strategy into detailed specific elements, performance and targets, so people can know and understand why you're doing things. From a, a owner or a board level, it can, it can provide a comprehensive overview of the company and what that company is doing on a day-to-day -day basis. And it pushes and promotes openness and transparency in general. Everybody can see the objectives. Everybody can see what we're trying to do and achieve. It's collectively and cohesively doing that together to achieve that. And if you can promote that within your business, you will promote a culture and a style which people will thrive upon. And that is the importance of the balance scorecard. It might seem long winded. It might seem like you push it to the end of your strategic direction because it's a, a measurement tool, but it goes deeper than that because it can highlight what needs to be done and also the initiatives that we need to use to achieve it. So it works both ways. I don't know whether this is with a heavy heart or not, but that is the end of this six series of uh, strategic marketing theories explained. I've had a bit of a laugh and a giggle with it. Hopefully you've learned something. Um, last thing from me really is this whole series and the first series can be found on Professional Academy's YouTube channel. So type in the YouTube on any noted notable web browser and it should come up. It can also be found on a blog post on their website. Check them out, go on the website, have a peruse, look at the blog post, check out all these and, and season one's um, theories explained. Hopefully I've added some insight Finally, from me and Professional Academy, before I take any questions, we might have happy marketing. Thank you so much for joining me and, and happy marketing. Uh, so have we got any questions? Let's just take a quick look. A bit of admin here. Click on there. Cool. Right. OK, we've got one from Elizabeth. Really good question, which I didn't really answer because I was very pro balance scorecard, but it's worth noting. So Elizabeth asks, what are the disadvantages of using 
the balance scorecard. Well, there's a few that I could mention, really. It's got huge, huge benefits. I mean, the blatantly obvious one is that it is really, 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 really difficult to implement because you need whole company buy-in. If you've got a small company, it can be easier. But having said that, it could be overkill if you have loads and loads of different things going on in that balance scorecard. If it's a large organization, it can be really good because it can bring people together to achieve certain objectives for the greater good. But if you have a large organization, it can be harder to implement because you've got more staff to onboard with it. I hate that phrase on board. You've got more staff that have to agree that this is the way forward and adhere to the balance scorecard. Other elements, you need to have that fine balance between finance, between customer, between uh, internal processes and developing skills. And the company needs to agree that development of skills and processes and all the other elements are as integral as financial gain. There could be too many indicators. So you're trying to achieve too much too soon, too quickly. It needs to be updated regularly. So an objective might be achieved. What's next? It could be that objective is now redundant and it's been superseded because of changes out of your control. And finally, I, I think just to reiterate, you need the buy in of the organization, the whole organization, top down, bottom up. If you don't, then it's pretty pointless. If you're focused on finance, but not learning and, and growth, then you're not doing what the balance scorecard says you need to do. And Captain and Norton, I suppose, would be rather annoyed. But that's neither here nor there. And, and like I said at the start, Kaplan and Norton might have developed this and I might have explained it in a slightly different way, but hopefully the way I've explained it and the way I would look to utilize it and implement it has been of value to you. Uh, if it has, I'd love to know if it has and if you use it, how you use it and if it's been a positive or a negative experience. So finally, um, once again from me, Professional Academy and Abby for all their help in the background, really appreciate it and couldn't do all the graphics and all the clicky things, dumbing down your job there, I know, uh, that you've done in the background. Really, really, really appreciate all your help and support. So finally, happy marketing and see you later.